Well, good evening, everybody. Michael Soothing here. I thought I would bring something a little different into our subject matter tonight, and that is a discussion of high-functioning autism, also known as ASD spectrum disorder, at the very high end. Um, by high, I mean uh, symptoms that are not so severe, and also known as Asperger's syndrome. Never mind those squawking, loud geese in the background. They're still flying around here acting crazy because it's mating season. So, like human beings, when they start mating, they act particularly insane. The males in particular, when they're chasing the females. Uh, anyway, this subject is near and dear to my heart because my eldest, my firstborn, has been diagnosed since a young child with Asperger's Syndrome and I thought I would tell you a little, just a little bit about it and then um, we refer to it also as Aspie. You know my GF has some characteristics and traits of Aspiness and so do I and I think those were passed down genetically but my son is more, uh, is a little further out on that scale than I am as far as that goes. Many people that go into engineering may have this kind of background and be overly interested in mechanical things and so forth. Like when I was a kid, uh, well, I'll tell you a little bit about Asperger's first. It's really characterized by awkward social interactions, and some difficulties with gross motor skills. Um, so, for example, if you have Asperger's, you might not be good at certain types of athletics, such as football, or baseball, or basketball. Um, and at least not until later in life, if at all. Um, and you may not understand well other people's expressions and where they're coming from and how to maintain a certain uh, zone of appropriate behavior with them um, compared to the norm. I didn't have so much that problem when I was a kid, but I did, ha I did have trouble with being good with athletics, and I also had trouble as far as social interaction, namely, I had very little interest in it. Um, I didn't go out and try to make friends in the neighborhood or at school. Oh, uh, you know, I was more obsessed with things going in on my own head, which is similar to what my son has, I would say, and uh, but more more um, noticeable in his case. So, for example, if someone said to me when I was young, would you like to have a bunch of people over your age for a birthday party or, you know, go do something you want to do, I would have always chose the second. And I'm pretty much still that way now. Not so fond of social gatherings and social interaction, unless it's one-on-one -on -one with someone I really like or relate to. So I will interview Dan, but I will tell you a little bit about him first and why we ended up um, taking him for evaluations when he was young. Some of the first things we notice that are very typical of someone with Asperger's is they're not necessarily physically affectionate or demonstrative. They don't really like to be held. Um, it 
it's awkward for them, it's uncomfortable for them when they're babies, for example. And as they grow older, you know, they have trouble with that physical contact. I'm still that way myself in many ways, um, except when it comes to girls, okay? That's the one exception that somehow works well for me. Well, I should say girl now, since, um, you know, I have my GF Joanne, and of course before um, I had my late wife, and before that I had, um, you know, when I was younger I had um, girlfriends as a late teenager and so forth. Um, but, in Dan's case, we noticed some of those things. Didn't like to have physical contact at all. And um, they don't really smile much if they have Asperger's or autism. And he really didn't. He had a worried expression most of the time. And I think that comes from the anxiety of having a hyperactive mind that's always thinking and analyzing on one track or in an obsessive way rather than taking everything in and kind of processing it and reacting to it. Um, someone with Asperger's can learn a lot. They're quite intelligent. But the two-way communication can be difficult for them. It's often more a one-way communication. If they're very high-functioning Asperger's, they'll talk to you a lot about what they're thinking, but it's hard for them to listen to your responses. They'll usually move on, you know, as you start your sentence to respond to whatever they're saying. They're right back at you with more of what they were talking about or their next topic of interest. Um, they may ask you a question, and as you start to answer it, they leap forward, assume your answer, and move on, just talking some more. Uh, when they're small, when Dan was small, but this is true for many with Asperger's, they'll have very focused behaviors that are obsessions or one thing, like in his case, it was... Um, when he was, say, three or four years old, he was very obsessed with vacuum cleaners. Now, they might not be obsessed with using the device, but they're obsessed with the device. So, say, you might have a kid that has Asperger's. If they're small, they may fixate on fishing poles or fishing reels. If you have some around the house, but never develop an interest in fishing. In my case, I had obsessions with both, so I was using the equipment I was obsessed with, but anyway, in Dan's case, he was never interested in vacuuming, but he was very obsessed with vacuum cleaners, so he would go through every newspaper and Sears catalog looking for model numbers and you know, different types, and writing in a book about them, and cutting out pictures and pasting them in a catalog, in a uh, notebook. Um, he had some other obsessions as time went on. Uh, another thing, when he was quite small, say three years old, he would be obsessed. You know, many kids like to play with building blocks at that age. But an Asperger child, rather than trying to make buildings or other things out of them, um, or structures or so forth, will either line them up in a pattern or stack them straight up as high as they can. And in Dan's case, that's what he would do. Daniel would stack them much higher than an average child of that age would be able to do because he would do it with great precision one block at a time and great care 
so he might get the 22 or 24 high, for example. Um, as he grew older, you know, he got obsessed with cars, of course, most young males do, um, but would have trouble, say, following instructions to learn how to do mechanical things and work on cars. But we got around that, ultimately, and he um, successfully took a course in um, automotive, uh, it was um, clean air technology done by the California BAR, and um, you know that kind of thing, he's still very interested in cars. He learned to drive late because of the gross motor skills issue, but once he learned to drive, he became um, quite a good driver, so, you know, in Dan's case, he compensates very well for the Asperger's in many areas. For example, it used to be when he was young, he wouldn't talk to people. Um, he was very quiet and just in his own head is where his mind was. And he would pace back and forth while thinking about things. I'm talking, say, seven or eight years old. As he grew older, he got more interested in verbalizing, but he would not verbalize on topic. So, for example, if he wanted to enter a conversation where you were talking maybe about politics, he might burst in right as you were speaking a sentence to somebody else and say, um, do you think girls would like me better if I cut my hair different? Um, so it's an inability to stay, you know, appropriately on topic to what the discussion material is. It's, you know, obsession with what's going on in your own head to the exclusion of all else. And sometimes, like if you've watched the movie Rain Man, and where, and of course, Daniel's nothing like that level of autism, but where the, the Tom Cruise brother character, um, when uh, Dustin Hoffman is not paying attention to what someone else is asking him, Tom Cruise would have to intervene and say, you know, listen, the doctor's asking you a question, and then Dustin Hoffman would answer. I've had some of that with Daniel, where someone else would be talking, and Dan would ask me to interpret, basically, you know, or I would have to get him to focus and respond through me. And that's another characteristic of Asperger's, is focusing on someone you know you can communicate with to help you understand the other people who you may not have an easy time paying attention to. So, anyway, those are just little snippets. Um, Dan is a very engaging, intelligent, and interesting young man. So Asperger's has not held him back. Um, you know, but it, it has its challenges for him. So I just thought it would be interesting for us to chat with him a little bit. Um, though he may feel a little self-conscious about it, um, he agreed to just a short little interview, just to give a little flavor of personality and uh, introduce you to more of the characters in my household, or in my extended household, I should say. He still lives in California. All right, so with that, let's chat with Daniel a little bit. Okay, we're just interviewing Daniel here. Mm -hmm. um, he's uh, my young one, my firstborn. Got some, uh, what would you say? Do you have ASD, Dan? Yeah, I would say so. Yeah. But I'm more of a social 
butterfly, though, still, which is rare for most people yeah. that have ASD. Sort of a social butterfly. Yeah. Okay. Not your typical person that has yeah. ASD, but I do tend to get into fixations on certain objects and landmarks and people at do you, times. Do you get... Do you get uh, OCD? Do you get... Uh, yeah, like with cleaning, like at work, I'll try to make it perfect, and then with other stuff, I think, too. Do you have obsessions? Mm, yeah. What mm. kind of things were you obsessed about when you were small, would you uh, say? Vacuum cleaners. Did you uh, stop there for a second? Did you form a big collection of vacuum mm -hmm. cleaner pictures? A collage book, too made a book of different did. color vacuum cleaners I think did you interview people about vacuum yeah cleaners? instead of um, asking for candy when we went trick-or-treating I asked what kind of vacuum cleaner they had I think or something yeah and um, so you would interview people and you were about what four years four or old? five I think yeah. yeah what was an obsession before that would you say before that age before the vacuum cleaner. oh I don't know I I know that I had lots like stairs, stairs I, which I still actually huh? do have with the home plan d yeah. designs. I've always liked how certain staircases look. Did you ever get obsessed with certain landmarks or geographical yes, features? Yes, I still do. There's a couple in Scotts Valley, a house up on a mountain there that I was obsessed with, and then a, a couple other la landmarks too. And what other ones in the area down By there? By Lockhart Gulch Road, there's a, a couple up there, a little green pa pasture, and then a big hill that has a house on top top of it up there, too. How about um, in the San Francisco oh, area? Oh, the Sutro Tower was one, and then Mount uh, Tammy was another one that I had an obsession with, too. Mount Tammy. <laughs> yeah. And uh, you're into maps, pretty much, mm -hmm. would you say? Yeah, I, I do like maps. I think I see a map right there. Navigation type stuff. What stuff were you finding on this map that you were interested in? I was in? looking at... Take a look and tell me what was interesting. Highway 1 and how far it is from San Francisco all the way up to Oregon. And then also going south, if you go all the way to the border there by San Diego and Mexico. Yeah. You checking out all the distances? Yeah, all the different just seeing how big the state actually is. <laughs> features in between. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're gonna drive back south today, yes? Yes, halfway. I don't like to do overdo the driving if I don't have to. And so you're gonna drive to Arcata, Arcata maybe. Yeah. yeah. Stay the night and then get back on the road early in the morning, I think. Yeah. About eight thirty or so at the latest, and then drive to the final drive home. Yeah. And so, um, what kind of things would you say you're most interested in doing when you want to do something? Oh, well, you know, I like some of those older video games like yeah. Nintendo and then some of the more modern driving ones. Yeah. And I like going down to the beach, going hiking on some of the trails up in Scotts Valley. I kind of like a, a little bit of a challenging hilly hike at times yeah. to get the uh, endorphins going for yeah. that feel-good feeling Yeah. that exercise will give you. And I still like to explore, you know, like I said last summer, I took a drive up to Mount Hamilton, up Highway 130, I think it was, and went up and looked at the observatory, snapped a couple pictures, and tried to see what kind of view was available from the top. Yes. How long a drive would that be? It was a couple hours, I think, from <clears throat> Santa Cruz, so probably about four hours round trip, probably two hours in, and probably two hours to get back. Yeah. It was uh, quite a ways. Yeah. Were you um, quite obsessed with finding a girlfriend for a number of years? Yeah, and with that I kind of found it was not all I thought it was going to be and I was disappointed with the experience a little bit. When you finally got a girlfriend? Yeah, I was like, yeah, I was kind of disappointed with well, some of the ex expectations of commitment 
towards the future and stuff. Was she pushing for marriage? Yeah, she was pushing for marriage and to have kids, and that kind of scared me away. Because the timing was a little too soon from when she wanted it to happen. A little too much pressure. Yeah, I think a little too much pressure. Yeah. I think a lot of guys fear commitment, and maybe that was one of my issues, too. (laughs) Would you say you're pretty talkative, Dan? Yeah, but I have been known to be shy when I meet new people, but usually I'm more talkative than not. Yeah, would you say that sometimes you're nonstop talkative? Yeah, I've been told that by a lot of people. (laughs) But I'm consciously aware of it, too, so I can actually control it when I have to. Do you remember when you were young and you and Justin were in the in uh, the next bedroom to me mm-hmm. and uh, I couldn't sleep at night because you would keep talking. Yeah, and, and you talking. would pound on the wall, right? Yeah. <laughs> did you pound on the wall or something? I can't remember what yeah, you did. Yeah, I'd say, Dan, be quiet. One time you came in at four in the morning and said, Dan, shut up. Yeah, <laughs> that was pretty funny. And you went to the bathroom or something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they were you, paper thin walls. Do you think that the way your mind works, there's a lot of energy going on in there? Yeah, I think thinking, so. A lot of thinking that has to kind of come out. I think so. I think that's why I used to pace around, and I still mm-hmm. do on occasion. A little bit of hyperactive tendencies there. Uh, yeah, a little bit of nervous kind of energy. A little bit of uh, twitching at times yeah, there. Yeah, lots of nervous energy. Movement, yeah. I don't know if I'd call it nervous energy. I think it energy most of the time energy it could be it's hard to yeah it could be it from time to time not so much today though because i'm looking forward did you to used it. to pace back and forth in yeah, the house i think so even at a run sometimes like up and down the hall mm-hmm. that was when i was little though i yeah, don't have would, that kind of energy anymore but you would tag the door and then run to the other end of the hall yeah i think so and do that up a few hundred times <laughs> was it that much i think so yeah yeah yeah, I did run up and down the hallway. And uh, outside sometimes. Yeah, in the yard. I think I would go to the park or go for walks do and a do lot that of pacing. same kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. What uh, What kind of things have you enjoyed? Were you kind of ex- obsessed with cars? Um, yeah, pretty much I have my dream car now. I kind of like the Porsches and the BMWs and the, um, some of the more exotic German cars. When you were young, did you get obsessions with certain car types? I think so, yeah. I had a Hot Wheels collection of 65 Mustangs, I think was one of them. Yeah. I had a couple books on them, too. Yeah. Do you you remember that sometimes it was overwhelming if there was people, too many people around talking? Yeah. At, like, family functions and birthday parties and stuff, I think so. Do you remember when you got... I think it was on your it was the, eighth or ninth it birthday. It was my seventh one the year it snowed, I think. Oh, the seventh. And uh, you got two Hot Wheel cars that were the same. <laughs> yeah, yeah you, you got me. It was a gold um, wind-up Mercedes where you yeah. pull it back and it like goes forward, I think, or something. Yeah. Yeah. I got upset or something, I think. I can't yeah. remember. Yeah, and there were two little Mustangs that were the same. Oh. 65 Mustang, do you remember that? Yeah, I do. And so you got really upset and got hysterical because it was just, uh, I don't know, because you weren't expecting that or something. And there was too much stimulation with yeah. the people in the room. That was kind of embarrassing, but yeah, I do remember that. <clears throat> Where did we go to eat that time? It was at the pizza company. Remember before it became Tony and Alba's and it had a um, yeah. upstairs area for like parties and a, a downstairs one too? You remember every detail of your life, don't you? Yeah. Pretty I much have everything. An overdeveloped memory, which is not yeah. what a neurotypical usually has, I think. Mm. Well, when I ask you things but about the past you're, and other people, you're always yeah. able to tell me. Yeah. If I want to know something about a cousin or a or niece, a birth date, I'm a pretty birthday, good on the numbers too. Huh? Or a party or yeah. anything like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What other things did you find on that map today that were interesting um, to you? Well, I was looking at how big the state is, what do, how it goes east, and it, there's a lot of stuff there too. A lot of mountain ranges and 
desert spots and stuff. And then I was also looking back home how small the little bay area in the central valley is too. Are you interested in checking that all out sometime? Mm -hmm. Yes, I would like to do some more road trips and traveling when I get the chance, when I get the time off from work to do it. And, you know, I haven't really been out of California yeah. really all that much in my life. I would like to see more of the world someday if I can afford it and have the time to do it. Yeah, yeah. And um, maybe Hawaii, maybe uh, some place in Europe. I mean, there's places I would like to go in my lifetime. Yeah. So, um, did you ever work in the automotive field? Yeah, plenty of different places, a mechanic shop, a smog testing shop, and then uh, yeah. auto parts, a couple different places too. Do you think Asperger's ever had an impact on you in those I think jobs? it may have. Sometimes careless mistakes on occasion or not remembering what I'm supposed to do. Sometimes I have a hard time auditorily processing instructions and directions from my bosses which can make it kind of frustrating for, for them and for me too. Yeah. That's mainly the big thing. Yeah. I think they would normally call that an auditory processing disorder but I think when you have ASD it can kind of be the same kind of thing really. Oh yeah. If you're confused by what they're trying to t tell you and you can't visualize what they're saying. Yeah. Because that's uh, auditory learning style. I would say that's not the case with ASD. It's more visual and hands-on. But I would say that you no. have learned to compensate for I ASD have. and Asperger's in many ways. Like yeah, a lot of people. Right now you're making good eye contact, for example. Mm -hmm. And when you were younger, you would never look at somebody when you talk to them. Correct? And I'd be going like this and like this and like looking around or fidgeting or doing some weird yeah. stuff. <laughs> But you're really good at compensating and so, learning yeah. to deal with it. And uh, Most people don't care yeah. and they don't want to blend in with the social yeah. environment. They're okay being different or whatever. But yeah. yeah. It's okay to be different, There's, really. But It is okay to be different. But it helps to uh, for just for communication sometimes. Yeah, but I mean, your interest, there's nothing wrong with having a broader, different range of interest. And no, not at all. Fixations, because it means you'll... Look them up the information and find out everything there yeah. is to know about it, right? Yeah, you have it's a, a certain landmark. There's nothing unhealthy about that. At no. All. Did you get obsessed with the Sutro Tower? For a yeah. Long? Every time I'd get a video game that had that San Francisco in it, I would try to find find it on there. The Sutro Tower. Yeah. Because yeah, it's so like it was the design, I think, and the, yeah. the color, colors on it. Yeah. <laughs> You know, I think one of those flight games would be good because you could check I have out an old one, like yeah. Flight Simulator. I have Flight Unlimited too, and you go up there in that one around the Bay Area. <clears throat> oh yeah, that's I have cool. Have a couple of those, yeah. That's cool. And uh, yeah, you used to know all the um, what were those fighting figures? I forget now. Street Fighter and the Street Mortal Fighter, Kombat yeah. series. Yeah. yeah, used to make jokes about those guys. Oh, right? that was pretty funny, huh? <laughs> didn't you name? Uh, didn't you have a nickname like for your mom and I that were named Sand after? Sandgeef, thank you. Sandgeef was me. Uh, yeah. yeah. What was your mom? Uh, um, Krang from Krong. Yeah, that's from right. The, Krong. Uh, Ninja Turtle character. We used to call her Krong, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we used to make a lot of jokes about the uh, characters, remember? Yeah. Yeah, so. All right. Well, I enjoyed our little interview, Dan, about. Yeah, I made up some weird names for you, too, like Homework Tie Head and The Yadda, and I don't know. <laughs> but, yeah. else, but there were some other ones, too. Do you have a quirky sense of humor sometimes? Yeah, Would which you I'm say? not ashamed of at all. I oh, think it's great. Nothing wrong, nothing wrong with laughter, is there? No. No. Yeah. People aren't used to what I think is funny, so they think it's just a form of uniqueness that makes me yeah. more unique and more rare. So yeah. Everybody is struck differently by yeah. different things, yeah? They might like, well, that's absurd, but that is kind of funny that you think that's funny, is what I've been told. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's why there's 
31 flavors of ice cream, right? So yeah, there could be 31 everybody flavors of since That's right. There are so. some serious things I find funny that others don't, and some jokes that are too common I don't find funny at all. So yeah. they're too, if they're not original enough or something. Yes. All right. Mm. Well, thank you for the interview time, Dan. You're welcome. I hope I can watch myself here on, like, a YouTube or something I'll later and show it to some friends or something. I'll send you a link. Yes, please do. All right. Bye-bye, everybody, All for right. now. Don't ASMR and drive, right, Dan? Right, that's right. Don't. Focus on the road. That's Try right. Try to remember the F word, focus. <laughs> focus, that's the F word we should yep. remember. Huh? Exactly. No road rage. No uh, road rage. Yeah, all right. Very good.